All right, we are hot off the heels of the meme event of the year, which is the Apple event. Not a huge Apple event this time, but a lot of stuff that we were expecting has been released. We've got AirTags, we've got new iMacs with the M1 chip, looking pretty sweet, nice and thin. We also have a purple iPhone, cool. Not something I was really looking for and expecting, but for people that like purple, that is the phone for you. But most importantly, I think the standout thing from this event was the new iPad Pro. Now, what is so interesting about this iPad Pro is that it now has the M1 chip. We've talked about the M1 chip on this channel before. This thing has completely revolutionized, and I don't say that lightly, this has completely revolutionized my workflow. It is one of the fastest computers that I've ever used. It's one of those computers that's almost boring at how good it is. Like it just works so damn well that it's in the background of my life. It's always working when I need it to. Whatever footage I throw at this damn Mac mini with the M1 chip, it just eats it up for breakfast. It just works and it's damn good. So anything that has M1 in it now, I am super excited about. But the iPad Pro has just always been such an interesting device in my life. I personally have the 2018 iPad Pro and it's been nothing but stellar for me. But the thing with the iPad is it's it's an iPad, and an iPad is only an iPad because of iPad OS. And I am someone that just works way better with Mac OS. And I've honestly been liking a lot of the improvements to iPad OS and the stuff that you can do with it now, like the files app and the fact that you can use external storage and stuff like that. But it still has just never come close to what I can do with Mac OS. So what I've been hoping for all this time is just more Mac OS stuff creeping into iPad OS. But in a weird way, we've kind of been seeing more of iPad OS and iOS creeping in to Mac OS. But as soon as they showed the M1 chip in that very creepy but kind of cool Mission Impossible spoof that they did, I was like, oh, this is it. We're finally gonna get some version of Mac OS or we're gonna get some more Mac apps on the iPad. But it seems as of right now, it's still just an iPad. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that can get a lot of work done with the iPad. They edit their videos on it, they edit their photos on it, and that's great, good for you. If you are someone like me that uses Mac OS quite a bit, using an iPad can be a quite frustrating experience. You could work on it, you could probably get proficient with it, but you'd have to work on it. It's almost like you have to retrain your brain a little bit to be good with the iPad or as good as you are with a desktop computer or a laptop. And that to me, it's like, it's counterintuitive to my growth. It's counter to how I want to operate. I need to get stuff done now. I don't wanna learn a new way of doing things, especially if I bounce around so much between a desktop or a laptop and an iPad. Like the iPad just needs to be a good extension of the things that I already do. So the way the iPad fits in my life now is it's mostly just a consumption device. It's an easy way for me to read tweets, read articles, watch Netflix, watch YouTube. I'm consuming things. I'm not so much creating things. Would I love to be able to create with my iPad? Absolutely. I love the display. I love the form factor. I love that it has a touch screen. And so now that the M1 is in an iPad, all I keep thinking is, oh, we're almost there. It's like a Ferrari with all season tires. Give me Sport Pirellis for this thing and let me take it for a rip. Now, my buddy Matthew Castanelli on Twitter, definitely go follow him. He's great for iOS shortcuts and Siri shortcuts and all that stuff. He's just a smart dude when it comes to Apple things. He mentioned waiting till WWDC to make a final verdict on this iPad and I completely agree. I think if this is something that's exciting to you and working with an iPad and you've liked what you've seen from iPads so far, yeah, give me that XDR display. Give me the M1 chip. Give me all this crazy new awesome stuff that's in this iPad, but the software has to match the specs. And so if WWDC comes around the corner and all of a sudden they're like, hey, you can now use Final Cut with your iPad, sign me up, I'm there, let's go, throw your computer in the garbage, go all full out iPad, let's do it. But right now, it's just like, why am I gonna drop another thousand bucks over my 2018 iPad Pro, which is perfect for the way I use it right now, because I can't use Final Cut even if I wanted to, why am I gonna drop a thousand bucks on a machine that will basically work the same way for me, but have an almost indiscernible speed increase on those regular day-to-day -day things? So I really think you should wait. And I hate saying this, because I'm actually someone who says, if you need the thing right now, get the thing right now, because that's what you need. I would say, hey, get an M1 computer, get a MacBook Air, get a MacBook Pro, get the new iMac, get a Mac Mini. That will do everything that you need to do and it'll be lightning fast. But if you want an iPad, Maybe get an iPad Air, maybe get last year's iPad Pro, maybe get 2018 iPad Pro like I have, and you'll be just fine. You'll be smooth sailing. You'll get the iPad experience and you'll save some money. So let's see if WWC gives us what we need. Let's get Final Cut on the iPad finally. And then maybe then we'll make that decision. Is this the next iPad that you should purchase? Is this the next future for iPads? Is this where we wanna be and what we wanna do with iPads? Because it is what I wanna do at some point with an iPad. But right now, I'm happy with the 2018 
but I'm excited and hopeful for what could be possible next. So I hope this helps you save some money short term, I guess. Like there could be a point where we're all just going to drop all tons of cash on this iPad when WWC comes around and, and Craig comes out and is just like Final Cut on iPad. And then like everyone claps and everyone's going crazy. I'll be that person in the crowd going crazy. But right now it's still just an iPad. So you know, save your cash, buy some AirTags. And if you're looking at AirTags, actually Moment just came out with these AirTag holder things that look really freaking dope. And so I'll probably get my hands on those for a review, but I'm definitely gonna pre-order the AirTags. I love that new Siri remote because I absolutely loathe the current Apple TV remote. <laughs> iMac, I'm skipping, just doesn't work for me. It looks pretty sweet if you're someone that works from home and wants a funky looking computer. But for me, it's a pass. And the iPad, like I said, throughout this entire video, We'll have to wait and see if Final Cut and all the things that we want from Mac OS, whatever that is, just give me an OS that works like we're used to working. I don't wanna rewire my brain. And it's not to be old school, I just want synchronicity between my desktop laptop experience and when I pick up a tablet. Right now they're very, very separated. It just feels like a big iPhone. But that's it for this video. My name is Patrick DeMasso, I hope you enjoyed it and you will see me very, very soon. Or maybe you'll hear me, maybe I'll just do a B-roll video next. Who knows? I don't really plan things, do I? Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. I always see people complaining online that it's hard to find music for videos and this honestly confuses me. I've been using Musicbed for the better part of two years now and it has always been a blast. I consider it more of a music streaming service that I can download tracks from my videos from rather than some generic stock music site. I browse and listen to tracks all the time and save them for later because the music just doesn't sound like stock music. It's just good music. There's even an iOS app you can use to listen to tracks to get inspired to on the go, or you can listen to their curated Spotify playlist. So stop using royalty-free generic music and start using real music with Musicbed. Sign up with the link in the description and use the code I'mPatrickT to get your first month free.